Number 46, integrated concepts. A basketball player jumps straight up for a ball. To do this, he lowers his body 0.3 meters and then accelerates through this distance by forcefully straightening his legs. This player leaves the floor with a vertical velocity sufficient to carry him 0.9 meters above the floor. Letter A, calculate his velocity when he leaves the floor. All right, so let's just create a simple picture here. Here we have our basketball player. All right, let's call him uh, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. There we go. That sounds good. And he leaves the floor, right, with a certain initial velocity that we don't know what it is, and that's what we're asked to find. Okay, so that's a question mark. It does, though, tell us how high he jumps. Right? So he jumps, it tells us, 0 0.9 meters. So that's his change in displacement. 0.900 meters. And when he reaches the top of his motion up here, what do we know about the velocity? Remember, anytime uh, any object reaches its highest point in the y direction, the velocity in that y direction is zero. So in terms of the frame of my problem, the final velocity here in the y direction will be equal to zero. All right, we'll call it meters per second. Great. Now, remember, Mr. Elijah one is in free fall once he leaves the floor. So what else do we know about free fall? Maybe some forces acting on it or some accelerations, right? Remember, the acceleration due to gravity is acting on Mr. Elijah one, and that is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. So now let's take a step back and see, do we know an equation that relates these uh, four variables together, in which case we can solve for the initial? Yes, right, if you recall, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by that displacement. So here is zero squared, right? The initial velocity is what we're looking for. That's our variable. Two times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.80. And our uh, y displacement is positive 0 0.900. So I just have zero is equal to initial velocity squared. Now minus, let's just do the math. So we get, let's see, two times uh, 9.8, it's negative though, times 0.9. So we get negative 17.6, uh, 17.6. Add this on over, Oop. add this on over, 17.6. And now we have 17.6 is equal to the initial velocity squared. And to get just the initial velocity, we have to square root both sides, right, to get rid of the square. And remember, anytime you take a square root of a number, you're always gonna positive a negative answer. So second square root of 17.6, and we get 1.4, well, 1.2, uh, 1, what am I talking about? 4.20, okay, that's in meters per second. And which answer would we accept, positive or negative? If you said negative, you would be unfortunately incorrect, right? It would be positive. Why? Because look at the direction of his motion, right? He is going upward here, positive y, okay? So that's the initial velocity. That's the velocity he leaves the floor with. So that's simple. This was letter A. Okay, let's jump back now to see letter B. Calculate his acceleration while he is straightening his legs. So now in terms of that picture, right, um, let me draw that out quickly. So basically what's gonna happen, let me just represent it as a point now, okay? It tells us in the beginning of the problem to accelerate himself, he lowers his body 0.3 meters, and then accelerates through this distance by forcefully straightening his legs. So we can assume that um, Mr. Elijah Wan will start at this particular point where his initial velocity at this point is zero meters per second. He's then going to accelerate some value by straightening his legs, okay? The distance that he straightens his legs by, they told us here, was going to be 0.3 meters. So now that's my new, um, change in displacement values, 0 0.300 meters, all right? We also know now at the, once he leaves the floor right here at the point at which he takes off, his velocity, right, which we would consider final, final for this part of the problem, would be 4.20 meters per second squared. Now, what am I talking about? Not squared, just meters per second. That's just what we found over here on the right-hand side or in the center of the page. And uh, what else do we know here? We don't know... Uh, Really, I mean, as far as the acceleration due to gravity, is he in free fall? No, he's not in free fall yet, right? He's, he's bending his legs and he's straightening them, so he's not in the air yet. So therefore, we actually don't know the acceleration he is experiencing. And guess what the question is asking us? It's asking us to find that acceleration, okay? Uh, do we know anything else about this problem? Mm, not really, 
right? So uh, what we need to now do is think about a formula that relates these four variables. And again, it's going to be the same equation, right, that we use for letter A. So let me write now for letter B, same equation. The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity is 4.20. That'll be squared. The initial 0, so that's easy, plus 2 times the acceleration, which is what I'm looking for, multiplied by the displacement of 0 0.300. All right, so let's just clean this up now. So let's do 4.2 squared. Then we get 17.6, right? Same value as before, 17.6 is equal to... Uh, 2, 2a times 0.3, which would be 0.600a. So then just divide it by 0 0.600 from both sides. And a now is simply the acceleration here is now 17.6 divided by 0.6. And we get a value of 29.3. So 29.3 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the acceleration. So that takes care of part b. Now let's see, what does it ask us to do for part uh, C? Okay, so it says calculate the force he exerts on the floor to do this, given that his mass is 110 uh, kilograms. So now for letter C, let's do it over here. I'll start it at the bottom. Whoops. I'll start it at the bottom. So here's letter C. Okay. Let's start by drawing a free body diagram. All right. So uh, there it is. So free body diagram here. So when we're thinking about the forces acting on uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elijah as we as he is beginning his jump, right? We have to consider two things, right? Since he's moving in the y direction in terms of forces, there's a gravitational force on Hakim, right? He is, and that is pointing down. So the weight is is a force, right? And remember, weight is equal to mg. I have the formula over here on the right hand side. So what's his mass? It tells us 110 kilograms, and that's always multiplied by g of the acceleration due to gravity, right? 9.80. So the weight here, let's find the value. So 110 times 9.8. And uh, we need three sig figs, so let's do 1,080, okay? Because I got a round there, no decimal. So that would be the weight, his weight in newtons, 1,080. All right, now we are looking for the uh, force that he exerts on the floor. So you might be tempted to draw the vector down because we're looking for that you know, force. But remember, that's that's a force uh, Mr. Lai Juan is imparting to the floor. But what we're concerned about is what force the floor is imparting to him, right? We're, we're concerned about the forces on Hakim, not by Hakim. So therefore, it's gonna be pointing straight up here. This is the force the floor exerts on Hakim, which is equal but opposite to the force that he exerts on the floor according to Newton's third law. So uh, this is the unknown, all right? So now let's see. Uh, I think we have everything we need. Also remember his acceleration that we just found in the prior part is telling us uh, what direction and where the net force should be. And it's pointing up, right? Because we found it to be positive and it was positive 29.3, all right? So I'll just write it here that his acceleration is equal to 29.3 meters per second squared. And now we have everything we need, right? So let's use the y. Uh, some of the forces formula. So some of the forces, some of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass of the object um, in question multiplied by the acceleration of that object in that uh, in that uh, axis. So here we have the sum of the forces. So we have the F unknown force, which is positive, minus the weight, which is negative because it's pointing down, is equal to the mass of uh, Mr. Elijah Wong, which was 110 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration, which we found in the prior part, so 29.3. So this is fairly straightforward, right? To find F, right? Just add the uh, 1,080 to both sides. That cancels, leaving us with the force being equal to 110 times 29.7. 29, uh, no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Can't read my own handwriting. That's a three there, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't have even known it myself. So uh, 110 times 29.3 and then add that to 1,080. So it looks like we get a value of uh, 4,300. And that would be in terms of Newtons. So that would be the force that the Earth, according to my diagram, or that the ground exerts on Hakim, but then, right, the that would be equal but opposite to the force he imparts to the floor. So therefore, the answer to the question would be exactly the same, 4,300 
newtons. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hope this problem helped. Uh, again, this is a good problem to do because it's now integrating, as it says in the question, it's integrating a bunch of concepts together. All right. So uh, please remember to subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. That would be awesome. And I will see you in the next video.